Welcome to Historically Speaking. Our episode this month is Picturing Pittsburgh's Past, Photos from Mary Randall Allen, a wonderful photographer from our hometown. And with me this morning, after many months of preparation, are three guests from the Pittsburgh Historical Society, Ann Pelkey, Barbara Willis, and Ivy Dixon. And I am going to turn the show over to Anne, who is going to give an introduction to our wonderful photographer. Anne. Thank you, Michael, for having us here this morning. Mary True Randall Allen was born in Pittsburgh in a brick house across from the Village Green in 1878. She lived most of her life there until having to go into a nursing home in Rutland. She passed away just shy of her 90th birthday in 1968. Mary was clearly a woman ahead of her time, having graduated from UVM in 1899 to become a professional photographer. She served as Pittsburgh's librarian for 50 years, became a correspondent for the Rutland Herald covering Pittsburgh's news of the day, and she got married at the age of 40 to Leslie Allen. Mary had an eye for beauty. She photographed children, adults, animals, houses, churches, scenery, giving a clear record of life in the Pittsburgh area between 1895 and 1915. She had a dark room in her house, and amazingly, she did all her own developing. Lois and Harold Blittestorf bought Mary's house in 1960 and discovered approximately 700 of Mary's glass plate negatives in the attic. Lois was an historian, a genealogist, and very involved with the Pittsburgh Historical Society at the time, and she donated these negatives to the museum. Her daughter donated another 400 of them back in 19, or, excuse me, in 2008. Lois secured a grant from the Vermont Historical Society in the late 1980s to have 250 of the glass plate negatives made into prints. Now fast forward to about three years ago when the Pittsburgh Historical Society purchased a scanner to scan all of Mary's negatives to identify as many as we could. Unfortunately, Mary was not diligent in her identification of her negatives. And the project um, took on a, a whole new life. Sitting with me is Barb Willis and Ivy Dixon, and they have taken upon the huge task of scanning these very precious glass plate negatives. Okay. We had to pick out 25 of these out of 800, over 800 that we have uh, scanned already. So. It was kind of hard to pick them out, but Roland Burdett was a very photogenic little child, and, and Barb and I just fell in love with him. <laughs> so we put this one as the first one. And Roland, uh, he was born in 1893. He was a captain in the 88th Aero Squad in World War I and died in 1948. And that's really all the information we have on him. But there's many photos of this little guy. This next one is the Keith family, and they're prominent in Pittsford today, and they've been here a very, very long time. Uh, the next one is, uh, is just labeled Kerrigan Girl, obviously her first communion, and she also came from an, a large family because we have some pictures of her with her sisters, and uh, it was, this was just very pretty. I thought, so we, we sent this one too. Uh, before we go to the next one, just to comment um, on this, and as we see, uh, these images are her choices of backdrops. So we yeah. will see, obviously, the rug here. And with the Carrigans, I, I don't remember the number of sisters, but I think five Carrigan sisters, mm -hmm. or at least three well, of them. More married. than that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So descendants of these folks have to be careful whom they court because they're already <laughs> second cousins on both sides. 
And this one is the Rutland Florence Mill, and it became fouler than the Mar Vermont Marble. This mill was not there anymore. It closed after World War II, but we have uh, pieces of the chimney that was when it was taken down. Yeah, and that chimney was taken down pretty recently in the last few years. Yes. All yeah. that was left was the chimney it was on the other side of that underpass in Florence. When you see a picture like that, you think of the hundreds of people that were employed there. Yeah. Yeah. And the next one is Oh, the Florence School. Yes, this was the Florence School and it was this school actually was located up around where the um, Catholic Chapel in Florence is. And uh, they did away with that and they took that ch this school and carried it over the creek and it now is a motorcycle, Bud Province motorcycle garage there on Route 7 north of, the, north of Pittsford. You know, even though uh, Pittsford uh, incorporates the village of Florence, people from Florence had their own strong identity. Oh, yeah. And I think that what we uh, fail to realize is uh, the creek really, the Otter Creek separated these two communities. And when we look at schoolhouses like this, it represented when kids walked to their village school and did not have school buses to take them there. Mm -hmm. This is one that we like. It's the Old Mill Bridge. As you're coming into Pittsford, it used to be right there, and on the side of it, there was a walkway, which is now it's gone, and it's looking towards Ball Peak. Oh, and this picture was one, the Chatterton Girls on the Village Green. Um, this is also on a book by Peg Armitage, she put it on her cover. But it's just really a pretty picture of two girls with their dog. And it's right on Route 7. And I think in the, in the background we can see some of the, uh, the gravestones in the cemetery. So it's very easy today. Uh, we could actually reposition two little kids in a dog <laughs> cart uh, and do a then and now picture. Yeah, it's now, it's true. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> This little boy's name, we found out through Facebook, was the Dupa boy. His real name is Joel Robert Dupa. We didn't know at first, but then he worked as a pharmacist at Beauchamp and O'Rourke in Rutland. And one of the clues when we put this up on Facebook, there are actually two or three images of him at the same time. Yes. And there were different clothing. And one yes. of the things that we surmised when a child had an appointment with a photographer, if there were multiple changes of clothing, meant that that was kind of like the deluxe sitting. And uh, as it turns out, when we researched this boy's family, he was the only child of his father's second marriage. Dad was a good 25 years older than his bride. And we can tell that he was just a very special child very loved because when people have seven to ten kids they don't mm -hmm. always have the luxury of having an individual photograph. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, okay this was a picture of the train that was going through the flood in Florence and it was uh, just a nice picture of a train. In that floodplain is that still very much there today? Oh yes, yes. And the train tracks still go through it. Mm -hmm. This is the Pittsford um, trans. This is where the Pittsford transfer station is well, is now, and it used to be the uh, railroad depot, which is now tore down. And it, what we uh, tend to forget is that people that did not have cars. Uh, that were largely farmers, they managed to get around. So from Pittsburgh, you get the train that went through a couple of times a day uh, to Burlington. And a lot of people took the train into mm -hmm. Rutland. They would get various things and come back on the train. And into Brandon. My mother yes. used to take it to Brandon when she was a little girl. Wow. So that, it, it persisted that long. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, this was just a railway accident that we thought was kind of interesting where the caboose is up on the locomotive and you can see somebody standing there in the field and watching it. So obviously Mary brought her camera outdoors to take mm -hmm. this picture. Uh, it was kind of a sensational event, but you wonder what, what should she do with it? Unlike pictures that you would take that a family would purchase, you wonder if this ever had an audience because at the time that she was actively photographing, um, there are newspaper images are really rare because of how they would have to set them. So you wonder how many people uh, have actually seen this picture of when this happened. Yeah. This is a picture of Eugene Patch's house on Route 7 in, in uh, Pittsford. And we liked it because it show, doesn't show any of the houses that are there now around it. And uh, the man uh, obviously is very proud of his horse. Yes. So yes. you get a <laughs> yes. picture of the man, you get a picture of the house, and you get a picture of the horse. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice picture. Yeah. And this is the house that's right next to it, which is called the Loveland House. And uh, it's Keith's right near Keith's Garage. And uh, you can't see Keith's Garage because it's not there back then. Mm -hmm. So that was also kind of a nice... Um, picture that you can see and you can see Route 7 is a dirt road. Mm -hmm. And in looking at the architecture of that house obviously what we see to the right of the image is an addition. Um, not a wise addition of somebody who puts a flat roof in Vermont. <laughs> they would have to get up there and shovel during a snowstorm. It's still there though. Is it? Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is a picture of Eaton Hall where Ivy and I went to school there, first through third grades. And then it was like a boys club. And, and I can't remember, there's quite a few different things that were in there. Oh, St. Alphonsus had their catechism there. And it was the high school. And it was the high, yeah, it started out as the high school. Mm -hmm. And now it's the Pittsburgh Historical Society where we do all our work and stuff. Yes, and uh, it, it, it's amazing how on Tuesdays, even at this time of year, when the building is closed to the public, you will see cars there. And if you're wondering what are all these volunteers doing, they are doing things like working on these glass negatives. And there are probably more treasures there per square foot <laughs> than hardly any other place in Rutland yes. County. I think you're right, Michael. <laughs> We're very fortunate to have a building the yes. size um, of Eaton Hall for our collections. Yeah. We are very, very fortunate. Uh, this is a picture of Henry Phillips Hang, and I think that it's probably taken in Florence. Uh, we just liked it because you don't see something like this anymore, of course, you know, with the horses and somebody hanging with a pitchfork. So looks like a nice summer day. And the Phillips family is pretty prolific. We, we know lots of people that even if they're not bearing the Phillips name, uh, they are Phillips school? descendants. And know. I think hmm? in, in this know. one, yeah. we can also see that because these were glass negatives and some of them were r really not stored with an eye for archival preservation, mm -hmm. this piece is missing. The color is a little mm -hmm. bit uneven. Mm -hmm. So when you leave glass items in an attic for years and years uh, exposed to extremes of temperature, this is what happens to them. And this is a small school. It's got one room and it's got the kids and it was named Bess's School. That's about all we know about. We don't even know where it is. So probably the lady with the hat uh, is the school. Mm -hmm. uh, we, had, we had a few pictures like this mm -hmm. and uh, of little one-room school children, you know. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few around Pittsburgh. Yeah. Has, has this one gone up on the, uh, the web page for anyone that has? No. Because uh, no. like, mm -hmm. this would be a good example, and we'll say at the end of our presentation today, how you can look at more images of these. And one of the things that technology allows us to do is to post these images to gain more information like we did uh, with Joel Dupas. So there may be someone uh, who has another picture. And I think what we have to remember about group 
pictures is there was obviously more than one copy that was mm -hmm. made of right. this, so you never know mm -hmm. who yep. might have mm -hmm. a picture like this with some identifying mm -hmm. information on the back of it. Uh, this is a picture of McClure Library in Pittsford, and it still looks pretty much the same, but the watering trough out front is interesting. That was there for quite a while, and, and they took it away, and now it's back again, but it's up closer to the library this, this time. We're, we're, we're very fortunate uh, to have a library in continuous use since this building um, went up. And um, the modernization really occurred in the basement of it, in the children's section, because it was done without an inharmonious addition to it. Because sometimes you can tell uh, that a historic building like this had um, kind of an ugly square addition put on in the 60s mm -hmm. or the 70s. This is not the case. And I think part of the charm of our McClure Library is when you walk in, it still retains the original stacks, mm -hmm. uh, a very welcoming uh, room, and it's, it's a good way, and again, I'm prejudiced having been um, a library trustee, that when you go inside, you have all the elements of a traditional library, but a place where people can access online computers mm -hmm. if they don't have their own. So it's a good marriage of present day technology mm -hmm. and the original purposes for which a library was founded. This, this is a picture of the football team in front of McClure Library. And we have the names, but we didn't write them all. We didn't write any of them down. So come to the museum and we'll show you. I, I bet there's a Keith among them. Uh, probably. Uh, probably, <laughs> yes. It was um, 1910, I think. Wow. And of course, the other thing that we noticed there, they're not wearing helmets. No. Uh, no. So, uh, and they're probably not wearing um, a lot of padding. No. Um, and the other thing that I think is neat, probably the man with the bowler hat is their coach. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. once again uh, a nod to changing fashions where hardly anyone wears a hat um, anymore. But we do have some, there is a, a couple of helmets down, the, down okay. at the museum. I don't know if it's, it has to be from them. Okay. He took it out of order. Oh. That's a sleigh one. Oh, yes. Okay, this is a horse and sleigh in front of the uh, house. And it's, Michael named it the Christmas ho home because they did live there then, but it maybe creative cookery, more people would realize where it is. And it's just interesting that that horse and sleigh are right on Route 7. The house is beautiful. Part of the house did burn, so it does look a little bit different now. But they saved the house, so the tower is gone. Yes. Uh, and it looks, uh, this is no slight to la later owners, but at least they kept the house. But it, it looks strange to have a second empire house that looks cut off. Mm -hmm. And it looks cut off because it was. This is one that Ivy and I really liked. <laughs> it's an old car and the dogs are sitting in it, but it does have a motor. And we don't know what kind of a car it is. Uh, I, I bet um, our friend Ernie Clarehue, who knows more about antique cars, mm -hmm. yeah, um, could, we should yeah. mm -hmm. show this to him. Yeah. And you can see, and I, I would date this around 1903, 1905, you can see why these early automobiles were called horseless carriages, <laughs> because <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like. And I think that at, at this time, there were probably very few people in Pittsburgh that owned automobiles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just kind of funny with the dogs. She took a lot of pictures of dogs and cats mm -hmm. and cows in yeah. the Cows. A lot of <laughs> pictures. <laughs> uh, this is a parade float for Pittsburgh's 150th birthday. And there was a lot of, um, a lot of pictures of these different floats. And they all were drawn by horses. This one's right up in the village where the village green is. This is uh, Colburn Bridge on Route 7, halfway up to the, um, by the library, being built. 
It really, it really is fascinating how this is a, a principle of Roman engineering mm -hmm. uh, where uh, you're building up the arch and um, you know when you're teaching kids elements of basic architecture the most important stone is the keystone right in the mm -hmm. middle but what you have to do is have the wooden frame like this you put the stones over it um, and then you take it out because unless you had something like that you couldn't build <laughs> yeah, an yeah. arch you'd have it yeah. fall apart and this is a picture of the bridge after it was built so you can see um, where it is there and you can see the building different buildings around there some of them are still there and some of them aren't but so it's a so beautiful is, bridge is this bridge still in existence yes in this it doesn't way? look yes. like this because it's been modernized okay it's just after the school okay yeah. yep this is another one that ivy and i liked we liked the the hats that they were wearing and then the lace and the fur for the collars and stuff and there's mrs sanford yes. miss dennison with her hats in there yeah lace. so miss dennison was she a teacher in pittsburgh i don't know um we, we could probably press further in Sanford that's a name associated with the Phillips family so this mm -hmm. this oh, is yes. another one uh -huh. <laughs> that we can probably um, look at and again uh, I think it's wonderful uh, the fashion statement that yes. we have here mm -hmm. right around the turn of the 20th yeah. century yeah, the hats, they were the obviously hats. young women dressed in yeah. their yeah. finest you yes. know And this is a cow in a pasture. Just to show you some of the pictures that she took were just, we, today we would think, well, that's kind of an odd picture, but she took a lot of pictures of cows in pastures. Now, not knowing a whole, as a city boy, uh, not knowing a whole lot about cows, do you think that cow looks healthy? Yeah. It looks okay. Up. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> 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 I'll yield to you with your experience, but... You know, wh why would someone want she, a picture of their cow? Well, maybe she was going to go to the fair, and they wanted a, a right? picture of it. Maybe, yeah. but yeah. it's out in the pasture, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah. a lot of them were. It's, you can tell it's a rocky pasture, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. where they put them. Unfortunately, there was one picture that we did not get here. I think it's right here. Is it? I think so. Oh, yes. Oh, good. This is the building that we don't know where it is, and we don't know what it is. And we're hoping maybe someone watching this might know where it is. And Michael will tell you how to get a hold of us at the end. Um, well, this uh, image, we, we've talked about this. Obviously, it's on a slight incline. Yes. And the clue to its identity would be uh, the very tall chimney. Uh, so I think you have to have a chimney that's that high so when the live ashes come out mm -hmm. um, there's enough time for them to dissipate mm -hmm. before uh, before they get to the end and uh, I think the next slide in is that the one uh, that we give you some more information mm -hmm. yes uh, yes and we're, we're giving uh, our thanks to Stephen Belcher for uh, preparing this PowerPoint and I said near the end of our presentation, I want to go back to one of our earlier images here because uh, these ladies don't know about this because I didn't know about this until yesterday. Mm. But thinking about Mary Randall Allen, I discovered that she is a cousin. <laughs> oh, of wow. course. Michael. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And, um, <laughs> She That's shares the first five generations of her Randalls with me. Oh, my uh, goodness. And uh, so this will be the subject of some future article oh. about discovering. And if it hadn't been for you, um, <laughs> I would not have made this discovery. And one of the things that we can tell from this particular photograph here um, is that she really had... A, an acute sense of history because if this is right around 1902-1903 um, she is dressed in kind of a colonial fashion this is not how women 
would have dressed around 1902, 1903. She's got a floral apron. You can also see that she has a neckerchief around her. Mm -hmm, so you mm -hmm. see those pictures of Martha mm -hmm. Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that she is making a statement um, about history here because obviously she set up the camera. She's holding in her lap a daguerreotype, uh, a cased photograph. So mm -hmm. those are mm -hmm. the first photographic images that we have from the 1840s. But to show you that uh, people, for images of themselves, they had a looking glass, she has the mirror. It's a beautiful photographic technique for her to have the mirror reflected. But also, she's chosen as part of the background here to put the silhouettes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. before uh -huh. people could uh, afford to have portraits mm -hmm. painted, very skillful people mm -hmm. would come around and with scissors and paper, mm -hmm. uh, they would have silhouettes. So I think that this mm -hmm. photograph really uh, exemplifies Mary's personality, love of the past, her great skill um, in composition. And what, what I feel is that uh, as a woman of her time, she did not get enough credit I, during her lifetime for what she yeah, did. Yeah, and if it hadn't been for the discovery of these negatives, there would have been mm -hmm. so much lost mm -hmm. about our, our village history. And you know, you wonder why by 1915 or thereabouts that she would have stopped. And the simple reason is getting married late and her husband was a farmer, there were other things that took up uh, her life. And I don't think we, we mentioned this. She and, um, don't remember her husband's name? Leslie. Leslie. Mm -hmm. He uh, died as a result of a tragic accident. Mm -hmm. uh, he was backing out of his driveway and I think a truck mm -hmm. hit him. And at the end of her life, as you noted, um, living close to her 90th birthday, she died in a Rutland nursing home survived by um, maybe nieces and but not a mention no at all about what she did. No. So part of the wonderful work that you all have done is to shine a light on an underappreciated mm -hmm. life of someone. And uh, so typical of the time, there isn't looking at Mary and censuses from when she lived in her parents' household and then through all the censuses of 19, up to 1950, she uh, gets credit for being a librarian, but never once is her skill as mm -hmm. a photographer mentioned. And uh, I will comb further the archives of the Rutland Herald, and she contributed every, that, you know, yeah, Miss so-and-so is yep. visiting mm -hmm. and, and all of that, but mm -hmm. never once her, yeah. her photography. So this is why we do what we do. Uh, is members of a local historical society to not only uh, bring to light underappreciated people in our community, but how many Mary uh, Randall Allens are there out there whose story needs to be told and it, and it needs the patience and the diligence of volunteers like you to bring it to light. Thank so you. thank you again, ladies, you. for being my guest today. And we all have more work to do. And I can't wait to learn more about Cousin Mary's family. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.